Panthers are the best side of the NRL era. No side has won three consecutive premierships since the NRL was formed in 1998, but just why are Penrith so good and why are they so far ahead of the competition? Well, we're going to take a look at the three tactics that Penrith employ that make them the best side of the past 40 years. If you want more of this content, early YouTube releases and stuff that doesn't get released on YouTube, you can join my Patreon for just five bucks a month. The link is in the description and your first week is free. Let's jump into the detail. And you'd think that Penrith would be the best side in the competition at making meters. And you'd be right. But it's the other side of the ball that they're a lot more dominant on and what sets them apart. Making meters, or at least appearing like you're making meters, is actually the easy side of things. Because a couple of line breaks every week can easily skew your stats. But meters don't always equal points. Just look at Parramatta versus the West Tigers, particularly in the first half. The Eels completely dominated that period of the game, but only came away with one try. And in the end, it cost them the match. Whereas meters conceded often give you a better idea of a side's overall performance. So far in 2024, Penrith are conceding about 1200 meters per game, which is the best in the competition. But then you juxtapose that with the fact they're making more than 1500 meters per game. This means that overall, they're making 300 meters per game more than they're conceding. And it makes it very hard to beat a side like that. And unsurprisingly, they're the best in the competition in both those stats categories. Well, what does this mean? Essentially, it means that Penrith are getting up the field easily, and then they're pinning their opponents deep in their own half. One of the best ways to defend your line in the NRL is to actually avoid defending it. If you can keep your opposition in their own half, it drastically reduces the chances of them breaking your line and scoring a try. But plenty of sides can employ a long kick tactic and defend their opposition up the other end of the field for large portions of matches. It takes other parts of the game to all fall into place to make this a match winning formula that you can repeat week on week. I've covered this previously, but possession and completion rates form key parts of winning. They aren't winning on their own, but they can go heavily towards a side dominating the competition. So far this year, Penrith have completed at 79%, and they hold the ball about 50% of the time, which basically means that teams have to hope Penrith drop the ball or concede a lot of penalties if they want to pressure Penrith. I'm not saying completion rates are the be all and end all. The Roosters have traditionally been towards the bottom of this stat, but when they won the competition in 2017 and 2018, they made a lot of mistakes but they made it in the right end of the field. And that's kind of what Penrith do. You're not really gonna see Penrith drop too much ball up their end of the field. But just who's doing all this damage for Penrith? Well, this brings us to our second point. If all of this work was being done by Penrith's middles, I doubt you'd see them being as dominant for as long as they have. It takes a huge toll on your middles to both get the ball up the field and defend with the intensity that Penrith does. And we're gonna look at Penrith's defensive intensity a little bit later. So simply put, who's carrying the load here? Well, it's actually their backline. They have an amazing backline that does the majority of their ball running in the hard parts of the field. So working it from basically their goal line up to about the 40 meter part of the field. If you look at Penrith's top five meter eaters so far for 2024, it's Dylan Edwards, Brian To'o, Sunia Taruva, and Isaac Tungo. Isaac Yo comes in at fifth, and he's the first forward that we see in that list. And don't forget, he's also playing 80 minutes like those backs. And Taylor May, another back, is just behind him. And you have to go down to seventh to see Moses Liotta, who is the first prop. James Fisher-Harris isn't even in the top 10 meter readers for Penrith. Well, that's easy for the backs to dominate. They're making all those meters from kick returns. Well, let's have a look at how many meters they're making when it comes to one pass hit up. So that's taking the pass from the dummy half and running into the teeth of the defense. Brian Tottle, well, he averages around 10 of those runs per match. Under him is Isaac Yo, Taruva, Edwards, and Liam Henry. Again, the top five. And again, we don't have any of Penrith's starting props. It's a stat that you'd normally expect props to be leading in. But again, Penrith, they use their backs like props. So before we go any further, it is important to note there are a bunch of intangibles that build into Penrith's success. Things like mentality, familiarity, and just playing a lot of football together from the lower grades to the top grades, where you build that famous word called culture. And they all contribute to the outrageous form we've seen of them over the past four seasons. But here is the biggest tactic that Penrith excel at. And it's defensive intensity, I mentioned at the start. And this is what really separates them from the rest of the pack. And we've seen it in their grand finals. We saw it against Brisbane in the last 15 minutes. 
We saw it against Parramatta in the opening 60 minutes. They know how to put their foot on the throat of their opponents and keep it there. So just how do we know this exactly? What, what we're gonna do is we're gonna look at the total number of run meters that they've logged in 2024 and subtract post-contact meters. That's going to give us pre-contact meters. So how many meters a player makes before they make contact with the defensive line? Penrith allow about 856 pre-contact meters per game. Again, it's the best in the competition. Quite simply, they got off their line quicker than anybody else and immediately hit the ball runner. And that also boils down to the fact that we're only giving off about 400 post-contact meters. So not only are they dominating before contact, they're dominating in contact. It's very hard for sides to get a roll on against Penrith, find the quick play the ball, and generate ruck speed that then starts to break down defenses, either the middle compressors or holes open up in the middle that you can then make line breaks off of. But that reliance on defensive intensity is also something some teams have occasionally worked out how to exploit, namely Parramatta in their regular season games. See, Parramatta are an offloading team and they've been the best offloaders in the competition for the past few seasons. So it's all well and good to rush off your line, but if you don't lock the ball up, you've then stressed your defensive line immensely and then they have to start making repeat efforts on a single tackle. It then becomes a lot harder to maintain your defensive intensity across 80 minutes. But as Brisbane found out in last year's grand final, Penrith are never truly beaten. So if you want to find out how Penrith launched the greatest ever comeback in NRL history, click this video right here.